Well, I'm here to, to try and defend Speaker's Corner. Speaker's Corner is a location where the right to speak is guaranteed by parliamentary acts. And the Mayor of London, who's in charge of policing in London, has explicitly stated that we have the right to speak even during lockdowns at Speaker's Corner. And that it is part of the Human Rights Act, Articles 10 and 11, that you have the right to assemble, speak, demonstrate. And so I'm trying to make sure that by hook or by crook, we maintain the sense within the population that we have this right, we have the right to exercise this right, and we should exercise this right. And I'm trying to display how the police are being used by some forces within the police. Who knows who's who's up to what in the police at the moment? It seems like there's a battle ground going on between different commanders, commissioners, factions, all fighting for control over the police force, like cats in a bag, on the basis that they think they're being favoured by someone above and someone on the side, and someone on this side, someone on that side. And, and we're being used as pawns. And last week, Nicholas Coles, Nicholas Scholes, a long-term speaker's corner, was violently attacked and criminally assaulted by the police, claiming that it was, well, they didn't even claim anything. They just handcuffed him. Because the police officer couldn't run after me fast enough, he just handcuffed the first person he could and then dragged him to the floor, even though Nicholas has suffered for many years from various mental illnesses. And he's been extremely well, and I'm worried about his health now because of the impact of such an aggressive, violent and insane attack on him. And I will be complaining to the police about this arrest. It's an illegal arrest. It's a criminal offence committed by the police. And uh, we have to stand up to them. Was he not on the Labour Party? Sorry? Was he in the Labour Party? Or I'm still in the Labour Party. I don't expect to be in the Labour Party for very long, but I am still in the Labour Party. I went with Piers Corbyn to Jeremy Corbyn's house on Christmas Day and delivered a present to him, uh, which was a letter dealing with the uh, criminality of what's happening in the world today and also the, the flawed PCR test that's at the root of the whole of the problem across the world today. And uh, we also gave him a, 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 a website called LatePartyDoc. But uh, we're trying to garner support from people across the spectrum who should wake up to what's actually happening in this country and around the world. Uh, on the political spectrum, where do you sort of stand? I'm a Marxist. I've been a Marxist since I was 17 years of age. I do the Karl Marx walking tour, plug, plug, plug. And, um, and you can find out about what Marx's ideas are. I know, I know a, lot of, a lot of people will attack me for that. You know, but, but it's my conviction. I, 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 I grew up, well, when I was 17, I got involved in Marxist groups. I, I worked in the underground in East Germany. I don't believe in Stalinism, so I fought against the regimes in East Germany and in the Soviet Union, etc. And I believe in an alternative type of socialism based on the ideas of Marx. But, uh, but, the, but the criteria for me asking for support in what I do it is not based on Marxism, it's based on certain fundamental principles that many people will hold in common. You know, actually, funnily enough, there have been Conservative MPs who have been far better than Labour Party MPs on the issues surrounding coronavirus. Have you ever been to East Germany? Or the Soviet I lived in East Germany in the old oh, days. I lived in China, lived in East Germany in 19, 1988 to 1990. I worked in West Berlin and in East Germany. Just before the fall of the Berlin Wall, I got into university at East Germany and I did underground work at the university there. I was also on Tiananmen Square in 1989. I spent a year and a half in China discussing with people about socialist ideas, uh, alternative socialist ideas. And, and that's, that's the way my political outlook was sort of formed. Do you have any social media people can see your opinions or ideas or something on well, social media? Well, but there's a lot of background speeches on content of everything on YouTube. And then you can find my own channel on YouTube, Heiko Koo, um, where I've got uh, a lot of material from the recent period. Uh, and also some back material. I started putting stuff on YouTube in 2009 or so. And there's an archive of radio shows that I produce every week on and off since 2003 on Resonance FM. Thank you. All right, thanks very much.